Hey everybody, it's Alchemisted, and I just... It's been a few hours since the um, Xbox press conference, and I've just been sort of collecting my thoughts about it. I don't really know what to say about this. Honestly, it's kind of weird that I'm making a, a audio log about that, but... Usually, like... Usually what you see in a Microsoft press conference is front and center, they've got Halo, they've got Gears, they've got the, the big franchise. And Microsoft, when you think about it, they have the rights to a lot of stuff. I mean, they've got the rights to Perfect Dark, they've got the rights to Conquer, they've got the rights to Banjo-Kazooie, they've got the rights to Halo, they've got the rights to Gear. They got, they've got the rights to a lot of stuff that they can develop first party. So it's strange, it's so strange that the only real first-party games that I saw were Metro, not, not Metro, um, were Forza, which I'll get to that in a second. Pardon me. I'll get to that in a second. It was Forza and Crackdown. And that was really it, as far as first-party games went. The reason this is so unusual is because this is not a usual year for Microsoft. They're launching a new console this November. So that's kind of like the first thing you need for a new console. Is you need a reason for people to buy the new console. You need a reason to show people why they should buy it. They should fork the money over to buy that new console when they're already usually perfectly happy with the one they have. <coughs> and this isn't even really a new console. This is just an updated Xbox One. And, okay, let's talk about the name. The Xbox One X. Oh! What the... What are you doing? That's the exact same problem that Nintendo made when they made the Wii U. You're, you're going to have the same marketing headache as Nintendo when people saw the Wii U as basically a peripheral for the Wii. They didn't understand what it was or what it was about or what they were trying to do with it. And it bombed. It bombed hard. And the name was a big part of that. It didn't really have an identity of its own. Look, let's, let's be real here. Developers are going to want to develop for this console because the increased performance means that they have less headaches to worry about making things work. But the problem with that is the, the name could hurt the like I could be completely off base here and I I it's entirely possible maybe even likely that I am completely wrong that I'm reading this completely wrong and this will sell gangbusters but that name is going to confuse people it's going to confuse the issue of what this console is about why should I buy, if I have an Xbox One, and I'm happy with my Xbox One, why would I buy an Xbox One S or an Xbox One X? Like, what is the difference between an Xbox One X and an Xbox One X to someone who has not bought an Xbox or to someone who just bought the Xbox, an Xbox to play Halo on? You didn't even announce a new Halo title. It's, you didn't even announce, like, a side story, like Reach or ODST. That was the most surprising thing to me, is you had this new console announcement, which is almost, you started the show, you started the show with the announcement, but it almost felt like an afterthought. And then you talked up the same talk you did before about 4K TVs, and you can enjoy this even if you don't have a 4K TV. The same kind of talk you were making last year when you didn't have a console coming out. So, I don't know what they're doing with that. I don't know where they're coming from with that. It feels like they're making the same mistakes that Nintendo made with the Wii U. And I hope they're not. I hope it's not the case, because I would like the PlayStation 4 to have a competitor. Having a competitor in the Xbox made the PlayStation 4 a better system, and... I would love to have that competition continue because the two competing with each other, like the two companies and their two products competing with each other to be more convenient and more 
tuned to the wants and desires of the consumers is better for all of us. And I would like that rivalry to continue because we all benefit from it. Both like PlayStation 4 users benefit from it, Xbox users benefit from it, Nintendo not so much, but they made their bed and they're sleeping in it now. I really hope that the sales are not damaged. Like, I know the sales are going to be damaged by this name, but I hope they're not damaged too bad. That was a really bad idea to name it that. They really should have given it a new name. Scorpio was fine. Microsoft Scorpio was fine. Or Microsoft Crossbone. Because people keep people call the Xbox the X-Bone constantly. So just go run with it. Microsoft Crossbone. There you go. Uh, there's your new console. And it's a big black box, again. I know That was a joke, like, a few years ago, but it's still true. It looks like a big VCR. So, not impressed at all. They were, they were talking about the technology. They, they threw out a lot of technolo technological terms out at the beginning of the show. They talked about how it had a uh, new power. Like, like it had, had a new sort of internal power management system that, th that was apparently so revolutionary, revolutionary they named it after the guy who invented it on their staff. Um, they called the original developers of the Xbox Renegades, which I don't know how you could be a renegade working for one of the most wealthy cor corporations in a, the world who, who literally have an install base everywhere. Everybody's running Windows. You know, like cor like major corporations like all over the planet are running windows schools lab laboratories militaries are running windows i doubt you could call somebody who works for that company a renegade but this show they were really trying to paint themselves as the underdogs coming out swinging and it did not work it did not work it felt it face planted immediately because what they the messaging was so ridiculous. They talked about how the original designers of the Xbox were renegades, and they went from the announcement of the Xbox Scorpio, or the I'm sorry, the Xbox X, the Xbox One X. What a terrible name! They went straight from that announcement and talking up how they had been the underdogs in this console industry, and went straight to talking about the deal they just signed with Porsche in what is basically an extended car commercial for Porsche disguised as a Forza presentation. The messaging is is all weird with that. It's like, we were renegades. We were the underdogs. We were the ones fighting to give you the best equipment and the best hardware, and we were breaking conventions to do it, and now we sold out to Forza. And, and now we sold out to Porsche. Here's a car. They actually had a Porsche on the on the studio on the on the the stage. They had it like right there, and then they showed off that same Porsche in Forza. <laughs> it was like we were we used to be renegades. We used to be the guys like breaking convention and taking on industry giants like Sony and Microsoft. Now we're selling out too. It's, it's basically the message they were sending. The highlights, the two highlights for me throughout this thing, well, there were, there's really three. One was Terry Crews. Um, Terry Crews was in a trailer for a Crackdown where he was basically just allowed to be Terry Crews throughout the duration of the trailer, and that was fun to watch. Uh, then there were two, there was another zombie game, State of Decay, uh, State of Decay 2, rather. There was a Life is Strange prequel. I thought, I, I thought the, uh, Original Life is Strange was kind of like a well enough, like a, enough of a self-contained story that it didn't really merit a sequel. But I'm sure people who really love Life is Strange is going to are going to eat that up. More power to you. Um, there was a trailer for Dragon Ball Fighters, which looks fantastic. That looks like a great fighting game. But the, the two big things that stuck with me. And I, and I use stuck in a very loose way. I don't mean and stuck with me as in, like, moved me very much to buy something. They just kind of, like, 
were more striking is, first of all, you have Metro Exodus, which looks like you, you're you combining Metro with Stalker. And, that, and that's kind of, for a lot of people, oh. Oh, the power's going out. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Save the file. Okay. So I saved the first half of this. <laughs> if the power goes out, the first half is saved. So yeah, there's been like storms all day. If anything, I'll be able to wa at least I'll be able to watch Twitch on my phone when it comes time for the Sony, not the Sony, the Bethesda presser. But back to what I was talking about. I was talking about um, Metro, and what it looks a lot like is it looks like you've got Metro and you've got Stalker, kind of being merged. Like, not, not the actual, like, franchises, but the sort of the gameplay of both kind of being merged into Metro Exodus, which for a lot of people is going to be chocolate and peanut butter. That's going to be real cool, because a lot of people love Stalker and a lot of people love Metro, and now those two gameplay styles and sensibilities seem to be colliding. And that's going to be real fun to see. I've not played Metro, but I, have, I, I do really like watching people play it. It's kind of strange, but I, I the the experience of watching people experience this world is real fun to me for some reason. It's real compelling to me for some reason, and like everybody's sort of different takes on this world, and of course, like the screaming at the, the screaming at people playing it, like what are you doing? There's a lot of that, too, because there's a lot of stuff you can miss in these games. And uh, I'm, re I'm really excited to see how Metro Exodus develops. The other was Anthem, which was Casey Hudson's pet project before he left, like, halfway through development or something. It's a uh, Bioware game, and it looks like... What does this game look like? So, like, so, like somebody described it. Hang on, let me look back through the Skype conversation where we were talking about Anthem. Um, let's see. Uh, what? I have no idea. I have no idea what there, where it was. Okay, whatever. What, what Anthem looked like to me is it looked like a cross between Destiny, Mass Effect, and Fallout 4. Is kind of what it kind of struck me as. It had it's it looked like it had like the sort of controls of Mass Effect a little bit, uh, especially with the jetpack. But it it ha also had the sort of like um, broken down future, like like hype, like super advanced technology broken down and left to waste sort of thing going on like Destiny has. That sort of aesthetic. But with, like, Fallout 4-style power armor. It looked real weird. I'm still not quite sure how I feel about it, but it certainly was a very striking presentation, even if it was kind of marred by the fake chatter that they, were, that they dubbed over it for some reason. Stop doing that. Stop dubbing fake player chatter. Like, stop dubbing fake players over your footage. And this goes out to everyone at E3. I don't care who you are. If you're uh, Ubisoft or Electronic Arts or Bethesda or Square Enix or Sony, stop doing that. Stop it. It always sounds cheesy. Not in a good way. Stop. <laughs> But that looks cool. That's something that I'm probably going like, to keep looking at. I don't... I wasn't really moved to buy anything. At all. Um, but I'll certainly keep an eye on Anthem and see where it goes. As for everything else, there was a lot of indie games. They all kind A lot of them kind of blurred together. Um, there was what looked like a MOBA, almost. But uh, the the actual like Twitch app like crashed um, immediately when it was shown, so I missed most of that. I don't think I missed anything important though. 
that was about it. Really sort of tepid press conference, really. They they were determined. So you you can say that they did show like tons of games. Most of them were indie games. Uh, most of them were indie games. A lot of them were pixel based. Uh, there was the pirate game, like Sea of Pirates or something, or Sea of Thieves or whatever it's called. Uh, that was a that was a really fun little trailer for that. A little, little gameplay trailer uh, had a really great sense of humor. Little kids will probably eat that shit up. I don't really... No. Really, nothing really moved me about this press conference. It was real tepid and just sort of, this is Microsoft. We have, like, we have, like, one big announcement, really, and for the rest of this, we're just going to be going through the paces. So much so that they gave... Like, the Anthem was the last thing they showed. They gave the spotlight to a non-exclusive game. Because Anthem's coming up for PS4, too. It's coming up for PS4 and PC. So, they gave the spotlight to a game that's not exclusive to their new console hardware. I really just... wasn't feeling it at all. I'm hoping Bethesda... Bethesda really knocked it out of the park on their first press conference. And even though I knew pretty much everything that was coming for their second press conference, it wasn't bad. It was far from it. They announced Quake. They announced, um... I think they showed off more stuff from Dishonored 2 in that one. They announced maps for Doom and DLC for Fallout 4. I'm hoping they got some more to show this year. I'm hoping Bethesda knocks it out of the park again. Because I know they're working on a bunch of new IPs. And, of course, they're working on Elder Scrolls. We all know they're working on Elder Scrolls 6, but... I don't expect to see Elder Scrolls 6 for some time to come, but they did release Skyrim Special Edition. We may yet see something for that. I am hoping. This is probably a vain hope, but I am hoping. So, the Bethesda press conference starts in, like, three hours, two and a half hours. It starts at 11 p.m. over here. So... We shall see, and I will report back after uh, I have borne witness to whatever it is they have to show. Hopefully, like, I, I'm hoping for Bethesda. Here are my hopes. I'm hoping for Doom. Something related to Doom. Maybe not even a new Doom game, but some sort of expansion or DLC, because the current Doom ends on a cliffhanger. Uh, some more information about Quake. Something new about Quake. Evil Within 2 is something that has been suggested. I doubt we're going to see anything Fallout related. And that's really it. That's, re that's really all I'm expecting. Is, like, something regarding Doom. Because it's one of the biggest things they have. And... Maybe a video documentary about Elder Scrolls. I doubt we're going to see anything like that, though, because they tend to only announce games like Fallout and Elder Scrolls the years they come out, which is kind of a smart thing to do in retrospect. So just like you're only going to announce it and start showing stuff off from it when you know it's releasing that year. So, so we'll see. The power stopped flickering on and off. Hopefully it stays up. I should probably charge the phone while I can. So, I'll see you guys later. So, later.